OK, now we're going to talk about what the class, today's class is about, which is about planning graphs. So a planning graph is just a reachability graph plus some stuff. Um, uh, let's talk about why the reachability graph sucks. Um, so it's awesome because it can return values to infinity, and because, do I need to refocus this? Um, it's awesome because it can return values to infinity, and because the heuristics are like kind of reasonable, sort of, except that here, like if our goal was to have our cake and eat it too, then both of those are achieved in level one, and we'd get a heuristic value of one, even though that's actually impossible. So, so the reachability graph could be doing a better job for us. So H1 is not the world's most awesome heuristic. Now, well, that's H1 max. H1 plus would say, hey, there are two goal literals. This one occurs in level one. This one occurs in, well, I guess that occurs in level zero. Yeah, so it actually even H plus sucks here. So they both suck. So this is why we need planning graphs. A planning graph is like a reachability graph, except that you use a red pen as well as a blue one. And what we have are little indications that are called mutual exclusion relations, which say, hey, you know, when I did this, this eat action, it caused not have to become true. That is mutually exclusive with the having here for two reasons. One, like they're opposite of each other. I'm deleting something. Um, but, but, uh, but really, that you can think of it as I can't do this eating and this persistence action, this no persisting, this no op persistence action at the same time. I have to choose one or the other. So they're little, little. I don't know quite how to draw it. Little mutually exclusive, mutual exclusion relations here. Saying can't do both of those at the same time. Can't have these two at the same time. And then to compute a heuristic, instead of just looking for where the literal first enters the planning graph. Ooh, ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. Not only are these mutually exclusive because they're opposite, but because these two actions are mutually exclusive, one deletes the effect of the other. That means that because the only way of getting this is through that action, this is mutually exclusive with that. The, the, the having is mutually exclusive with the having eaten as well. So what we do is instead of looking for the first level where the literal enters the planning graph or the reachability graph, in a planning graph, you look for the first level where the goal literals are not mutually exclusive. So from a planning graph point of view, we're not done yet, which uh, is fine, because we still have some levels to go here. Um, now let's see, we can bake, we can, uh, we can eat, we can no-op. Um, we can persist that, have, not have. Let's see, the eating will make not having and the have eaten true. The precondition of eating is have. The baking makes having true, if, I rec if I'm recalling correctly. Uh, and I think baking is, I don't think there's anything else in baking. Uh, now, there are no ops for everything else as well. Um, so there's a no op for not having. There's a no op for eating ha or having eaten. And there's a no op for not having eaten. OK. Um, Now, to eat, we have as a precondition having. And to bake, we have as a precondition not having. And have and not have are mutually exclusive, which means this eat and this bake are mutually exclusive. 
this no op here requires the not having. So that's also mutually exclusive. This eating and that having are mutually exclusive. So this no op and that eating are mutually exclusive. Um, these are mutually exclusive, so that means these are mutually exclusive. These are mutually exclusive. Uh, this, this, uh, let's see. This no op here requires the having, which is mutually exclusive with the eating, which is a precondition of this no op which means that this no-op and that no-op are mutually exclusive, which means that here the eating and the having, are, are the eating and the having here mutually exclusive? That's the big test. If we, if we get have through the no-op, then it's mutually exclusive. The only way of getting the eating is through this no-op or this eating, and both of those are mutually exclusive with this no-op. However, we can also get having through the bake, and the bake is not mutually exclusive with the no-op. Right, because not having and having eaten are not mutually exclusive. So these are not mutually exclusive, so these are actually not mutually exclusive anymore. This is a little tedious, as I'm sure you'll agree. Let me make sure that's nice and big so you can see. Um, this is a little tedious, but it actually, it's just like a normal reachability graph in that more things become possible. Not only are we, are, so it turns out we've got the same number of literals, but the number of mutual exclusion relations at the following level is smaller. In particular, both goal literals are now True, without being mutually exclusive. We can make having and have eaten both true at time step two. I should draw the time step here uh, in blue. T equals two. Okay, does everyone understand that example more or less? There, there are general rules. The general rules are Two actions are mutually exclusive if one of them deletes the add of the other, one of them deletes a precondition of the other, or the, the preconditions that they need are mutually exclusive. Two literals are mutually exclusive if one's the negation of the other, or if all ways of achieving one are mutex with all ways of achieving the other. Each of these is just common sense, right? If there's, if if all ways of baking are mutually exclusive with all ways of eating, then I can't bake and eat at the same time. Or, um, and we saw that in the last in our planning graph um, here. Having and eating were mutually exclusive here because the only way of getting have here was through this no op, which was mutually exclusive with eating because eating deletes one of its, both its precondition and its effect, actually. So it's mutually exclusive in multiple ways. But then here, there was a way of having, of, of having that wasn't mutually exclusive with the eating. So the, the mutex goes away. Frank? Should the last having and not having be mutually exclusive? Yes. Somebody's playing Frisbee. <laughs> Yes, those are mutually exclusive because they're uh, complementary literals. Thank you. So in all the precondition and the, uh, the effect are the same? Uh, this, yeah, the precondition is uh, that guy and the effect is that guy. Now whether you want to think of these as the same thing is kind of a philosophical question that's up to you. So each, each action and non-action has to do with one of the variables in the previous time step. So you can't do actions have preconditions, which will be from the, the previous fact layer. But you, but you can never do two actions or an action and a no op on the same variable. So like the top no op and the e should be mutually Oh, that's not true. That's not true. You can do the. Uh, I mean, these are this baking and this no op are not mutually exclusive. 
Well, that's not true, actually, because I guess this, um, this deletes the effect of that. So these should be mutually exclusive. Ah, really, really tedious to draw these things. So don't worry. We're quite liberal with the partial credit on these uh, for exams. Yeah. So you can see why you'd want a computer to do this. You only need two colors. OK, well, you can use just curly curly guys if you want. Uh, or I mean, if you're just careful, I mean, you can use arcs or uh, you know, if, if it, the nice thing is that the precondition and effects usually are going horizontally, and the mutexes are going vertically. So that's, so you could do it that way. That's fine. Just give yourself plenty of room on the paper. Yes, exactly. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely, you're absolutely right. Yep. Can you show the rules again? Absolutely. I would love to. And this is a real honest to goodness planning graph. Like, half of AI planning these days is based on planning graphs, and now you guys know what it is. So, you now are have the good fundamentals for modern AI planning once you understand all this. Tracking both positive and negative grounded literals, no op. Uh, yeah, actions are mutex if they mess each other up. Literals are mutex if there's no way of getting them both. Uh, sorry, just to go back to H1 sum yeah. briefly. Mm -hmm. Which is what you're supposed to do on the assignment. You don't actually have to do planning graphs for the assignment. So your calculation there is uh, the sum of the p values where the goal The first goal. layer in which the literal becomes true. So what if or achievable, reachable. Say so you have you know uh, half cake has a p one and then eating cake has. Uh, don't we start off with a cake? I think we start right, off. Right, I'm just saying, and then Eden is a result of having, so just, you know, you've got the prerequisite there. Wouldn't that give you. Yes, so H1 sum is not admissible. Okay. That's yeah, the that's why we have them both. And you'll see in the assignment um, that if you run your planner with H1 sum, it'll probably be faster, but it will not find optimal plans. So heuristic search bought, brought vividly to life with an inadmissible heuristic, just like assignment one all over again. So That's why we do assignment one first. If a non-optimal plan is acceptable, a non-admissible heuristic is acceptable. Yes. Yes. There's a planning competition held about every two years. And they have two tracks, optimal and satisficing, which is another word for like, try and get a good answer. <laughs> but uh, the best way of winning the satisficing competition is to just solve every problem, no matter how lousy your solutions are. Because if you solve a problem and no one else does, you get major points. OK. Uh, other questions about planning graphs? We, we, we pretty much have that down. Let me see if there's anything else that I needed to mention about planning graphs. Right, exactly. I thought it was a little too complicated. Yeah, you do have to do H1 sum and max, though. The way H1 is defined, is it using that? It's not using mutexes. Okay. It's just reachability. Can you get there? Okay. Not can you get there and be non-mutex with your other goal literals. It's just can you get there at all? But you could see how, final project idea, you know, do an honest to God planning graph. You know, write a real planner. Well, you're writing a real planner, but write a planner with a, a good heuristic. Yeah. Um, how many minutes do we have? The clock is telling me we don't really have very many. But my phone says we got plenty of time. The clock is two minutes fast. OK, so, so speaking of a real honest to God planner, um, Nathan, um, what the, you can see that 
uh, for once we put these mutexes in, the first layer at which these are non-mutex is layer two. We don't want to say that we should do two plus two. Like doing planning graph plus would not be a good idea in this case. Um, because, boy, that's really annoying. Um, so the, the, the best thing to do, so, so there's this conundrum here where you're, you don't really know, like, should I use two because this is going to be, um, there's only one way through this, or should I add them together because these are two completely independent things that don't have anything to do with each other. I mean, you can imagine a time at which, in which sum is correct. Um, if you had to, I don't know, do two completely unrelated tasks. You can imagine you do all the actions for one, you do all the actions for the other, the plan is going to be that number of actions long, but in the planning graph, you can achieve them both in two steps. But in fact, you know, the real value is four, so you ought to be using sum. What's the way out of this conundrum? We don't know whether we can add these numbers or not. What's the way out? It's really obvious. Go look at the actions and see if they're the same. So here, um, how did we get to this H and this E? Well, we got this H because of this B, uh, and we got this B because of this E, and we got this E because of this no op, which doesn't count, and the E. So if we collect up the actions that are supporting the goal literals, then we count them, and that's our heuristic value. And if they're completely independent, terrific. If they share actions, we don't count them multiple times. Fantastic. So that's a wonderful heuristic called the relaxed plan heuristic. Because those actions, in fact, are a plan. It might not be feasible. There are certain cases in which it's not feasible. But you know, here, if you trace back, we get bake and we get eat. And that is, in fact, the solution to this problem. So it's a relaxed plan because mutexes don't cover everything. They just cover binary relations. Frank. Yeah, so finding the optimal relaxed plan is, in fact, NP-hard. So in practice, people use a heuristic uh, to find a pretty good relaxed plan. So in fact, that heuristic is inadmissible because you're not guaranteed that you found the minimal relaxed plan. But in practice, it's extremely effective. And if anyone did that for a final project, it'd be, you'd have a great planner. Um, there's a very famous planner called FF, Fast Forward which does forward state space search using a, planning, a relaxed planning graph heuristic. And it revolutionized the world of planning in 2001. Um, so.